Today, I'm going to give you five keys to master personal evangelism, and this is going to be especially helpful for non-evangelists. I'm also going to give you one specific step that I want you to take right now as you get in to this aspect of reaching people for Christ. This is one area that I personally battle with, and I think it's an area that a lot of Christians battle with. How do you share your faith? How do you come to a place of being effective in personal evangelism? Thanks so much for watching the video. Please subscribe, smash that like button, and leave a comment below on your thoughts about this whole area. Let's jump into these five keys for mastering personal evangelism. And the fifth key is especially relevant and helpful for pastors, so make sure you hang around for the end. The first key is meditate on Scripture that focuses in on reaching lost people for Christ on the burden that you need to have for people who are far from Jesus, on the fact that we all face eternity, heaven and hell. There are many scriptures throughout the Gospels and the New Testament that you can give yourself to, to meditate on, to pray through, to really get into your heart. And I found one of the things for me that shifted me in terms of any area of my life is I jump into a series of scripture around that topic. And there's many scriptures around personal evangelism. I mean, you just read through the book of Acts and see where Peter saw a bundle of people come to Christ through his preaching. You see where Paul is planting churches. You read through the Gospels and you see Jesus' heart for people of those who are like sheep without a shepherd. The prodigal son story. There's plenty of scriptures. Meditate, linger in those stories and those scriptures and you'll find an increased burden for people who don't know Christ. The second is ask the Lord for a supernatural intervention in your life to give you a burden for people who don't know Jesus. I remember being at one particular pastor's retreat where at the end of the service, I came just overwhelmed. I just got so touched in my heart with a burden for lost people. I ended actually weeping, and I'm not given to a lot of tears, but I ended up weeping and ended up on the floor at my seat, on my knees, just crying out to God with a sense of deep burden for lost people. And I think out of that supernatural intervention in my life, I wasn't looking for the Lord to do anything specific at the end of that meeting, but he just decided, I'm meeting you now, John. And this deep burden for lost people came on me. And I think that really catapulted me into an area of thinking about how to reach lost people, both personally, but also for our church. And I think it was the start of something, especially for church planting in our church. So ask the Lord of the harvest that he would give you a burden for people who don't know him. The third key for mastering personal evangelism, especially for the non-evangelists like me, and I guess like, like you as well, maybe today, is to look for opportunities to connect to people about your faith work. It might be that you're sitting in the barber's chair and someone talks to you about what do you got coming up this weekend. Say, well, I'm actually going to church on Sunday. Or or for me, it can be I'm traveling to consult with the church. And I just like to weave church and Jesus into the topic very naturally into the conversation. And I look for opportunities to share I look to see if people are open for me to share. One of my good friends, Andrew Purchase, is a real evangelist, and he has a, a just a brilliant ability to engage people in conversation, but he's always looking for the open-hearted person, the person who seems like, mm, yeah, I think I'm interested in talking about spiritual matters. They might be interested in Jesus at the moment, but there's an open door for them to talk. So look for those opportunities. The fourth key to mastering personal evangelism is recognizing that the huge majority of people come to Christ, make a decision to follow Jesus before they're 25 years of age. It's the minority of people who, after 25, decide to follow Jesus. I became a follower of Jesus at 19, so I'm in that group of the under 25s. So how do you, how does that kind of help us with personal evangelism? Well, if you have family friends or family where they have young people, they have teenagers in the family or they have children in the family. One of the things you can do is actually invite those teenagers, talk to the parents, talk to mum and dad and say, hey, 
We've got a great youth group at our church that meets on Friday nights. They do some really good, wholesome activities. There's no alcohol. There's no drugs. It's all good fun. It's a church youth group, so they, they'll talk about spiritual matters. But, you know, it might be good for your kids to come along. I take my kids. Um, feel free to come along with me, drop it off, drop the kids off, have a look at what goes on. And But I tell you, it's a great youth group. And I think you can invite if your friends or your family who don't go to church have teenagers, invite them along to take them along with your teenagers to the youth group because then they've got a great opportunity. And and you become you become a master of personal evangelism because you're creating an opportunity for those young people to come to Christ in the context of a fabulous youth group. Or if your friends have children and say, look, our kids go to our church's Sunday kids program, you can call it Sunday school, the old, the old title for it. And sometimes parents are really open to, you know what, I, I wouldn't mind my kids going to church and enjoying a kids program. And you can kind of, you can add a little bit of a bribe here with this one. You can say, look, we can take the kids or you can just come and drop them off, sign them in and sign them out, do all that um, for security and safety reasons. But then you can go for a, have a coffee, go out and have a cafe breakfast together for an hour Come back and pick the kids up. Don't kind of feel like, gee, I have to get mum and dad coming to church as well as the kids. Don't worry about that. Let the children have an opportunity to come to Jesus. And I think this is probably a neglected area of personal evangelism because if the children enjoy that ministry on Sunday morning, enjoy going and being a part of it, then you never know what will happen with mum and dad. Now, here's the fifth key, and this is especially for pastors. So thanks for hanging around to the end to get this key uh, because I think this really helped me and I think it will help a lot of pastors move into personal evangelism is that every year preach an annual series of at least three Sundays, preferably four, on personal evangelism. Because I found that with preaching, that I always love to mingle with my preaching, the truth out of scriptures, I like to mingle my own experiences, my own stories, stories of other people that are relevant to the topic. So how can you preach on personal evangelism unless you have personal evangelism stories? So I would force myself, I would make myself every year, our church was going to have an annual series on evangelism. I got really creative with the titles, creative with the topics, heaps of scriptures you can use. I'd listen to other preachers preach on this area to get inspiration and ideas and kind of just kind of seed thoughts within myself. But then you know what I decided to do? I became far more attentive to opportunities to share my faith, to invite people to church, to invite those kids to our youth group, children to children's ministry. All those areas became far more alive and alert. And I became far more aware of that because I had an annual series to preach And how could I preach something that I wasn't doing myself? So I kind of snookered myself. I corralled myself by doing an annual series. And if you really want to get this hot in your own heart, really heat it up, do two series of three weeks, maybe one before Easter, one before Christmas, and get it just hot in your own personal world because you will then model to your church. Now, here's the one step I want you to take today. I want you to find a passage in the Gospels or in the book of Acts, where there is a a real emphasis on people knowing Jesus. You might even want to dive into the book of Romans. There's great scriptures there uh, about the penalty of sin and eternity we face without Jesus. And I want you to spend the next seven days meditating on those scriptures. Have a quick read of them, but every day read them through, pray them, meditate on them. Look at them again before you go to bed. Look at them when you get up in the morning, when you're having your lunch. Look at those scriptures. Saturate your heart and mind in the Bible because this, trust me, will increase your burden for lost people. I hope these five keys for mastering personal evangelism has really helped you non-evangelists today.